the death of Mythic Plus. Oh no, now I've told you guys about uh, my issues with Mythic Plus and how uh, if you start a season, maybe a month in, two months in, let's just say if you don't get off the starting blocks, you fall into an ELO hell. Thanks to your low score, people will not invite you. And the people that do invite you, it's a group that's filled with low score people and it usually ends in, uh, in horrible misery. Thus, once again, not being able to higher your score, and uh, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. A destructive self-fulfilling prophecy that you can't get out of. But anyways, let's see uh, why Bellular thinks uh, Mythic Plus might be dead. Apparently, Mythic Plus is dying, because if you look anywhere where WoW is being discussed, you'll see the same sentiment that something pretty major needs to change for the next season or else this so-called pillar of World of Warcraft will crumble to dust. So I dove into it. Today we're gonna learn everything that's went wrong and one of them is not today's sponsor. Squarespace. Oh what a transition. I will say uh, Mythic Plus when it first came out it was a game changer man. I'm telling you I was in law school at the time and Mythic Plus was the only way I could play the game and still gear out because I had no time to raid. And I've told this story before. I would go down to the basement of the student center and run a Mythic Plus every day between classes. While all my friends were out studying, you know, go, learning about torts and, you know, civil procedure and all that, Sammy Boy was running Mythic Plus dungeons all the time. I'd get my Wingstop prize and I'd just go down and just fucking run it. It was a great way for me to play the game at a time where I just didn't have time to raid. And I, I loved it. But yeah, it has changed a little bit. It really has. And let's see uh, what the hell is going on. Space.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, the place to rapidly establish yourself on the web and where they have changed the game with their new yeah, fluid Valor engine Camping feature. It's the shit. next level way to customize your website. They've run two of our sites, most recently the one for our game studio. And when I was messing around the back end and I saw this upgrade button, I got interested. I clicked it and fluid engine was enabled. I was presented with a clear grid and soon realized I could drag and drop things on the page like web stuff never has worked before it's this is so yeah. intuitive it's True smooth moment. images text buttons you can size them and position them wherever you want and this never lets you take their award-winning templates and accomplish exactly what you want with them and of course being squarespace it all works on mobile so coming from the likes yeah, people, of photoshop people used to always tell me how, like, be like oh sam you're gonna have to stop work. playing eventually it's felt rigid prone to breaking like, and here bad bitch watch me not stop solve that problem which here is i am impressive. still it's playing nice to see them investing in democratizing web development and making it so that even people like me can make something that looks nice so that's fluid engine it's one of their many features you can check it out and build your site for free at squarespace.com forward slash bellular gaming and send it live with code bellular gaming now, 10% off an TV. annual plan. Code Bellular Gaming. That's right. This is a fairly complicated situation. A few different issues have cropped up <laughs> at the same time, creating a deadly cocktail Playing of players life. just feeling fed up and burnt out, questioning why they're even bothering to put this amount of time into Mythic Plus in the first place. A quick yeah. look over at YouTube. One or thing I will say about Mythic Plus and one reason why it's kind of less fun is it used to be a supplemental option to rating. But now it's like a requirement because mythic rating is so much harder to like get a group together and everything like that. So if you want to pump your item level any higher than what is given to you in heroic, you have to do mythic plus. So it feels like it's required and it feels like if you don't get one in during the week, your entire week is a failure, your vault is a failure and everything sucks after that. Or Twitter shows that most of the community's kind of up in arms, at least the people who actually talk about M+. They're begging Blizz to fix their broken game mode. Automatic Jack went as far as to call it the worst season in a while, an opinion that I've seen echoed all over the place. It is still so optional. So what's going wrong? It is still optional, but it is, uh, it is by far and away the most efficient way to gear out. Like somebody who does Mythic Plus, is gonna it's it, you know it's an easier form of the game because it only requires five people so if you've got five people you're gonna gear out way quicker than somebody in a guild or someone who arranges raids and does all that shit because mythic plus i mean you just spam that shit it's never ending you just go in over and over raiding is weekly locked 
The God Comp was a mistake. Augmentation Evoker, Shadow Priest, Holy Paladin, Fire Mage, Comp. Guardian Druid. Together, this group composition was strong enough Holy to crap. blow through all of M+. Plus. Every and that's because individually, group. these specs are all amongst the strongest, but their damage profiles and their various different bonuses yeah, you're kind right. of Mythic acted plus in popular. a way to just create humongous... I don't know if it's more popular because it's more fun, but it is uh, the path of least resistance, right? Players want to gear out. Players are always going to go to the path that gears them out the quickest, and Mythic Plus is the fastest way. It's the path of least resistance. It's the best and easiest way to, uh, to gear out quickly. This group output, along with their all-encompassing utility commitment. Yeah, and true. obscene survivability. Four full heavenly exactly. kings with their new thing. augmentation of Voker as a glorious leader. And Blizzard were too slow to nerf this stuff, far too slow. And that meant that people were actually pushed into re-rolling in order to keep pushing those higher Get keys. Your Augie, boys. If you're not running this comp, it's literally impossible to do keys as high, right? This is not a min-max optimization thing. This is a, you aren't allowed to play these specs if you want to get that right. high thing. Right. Uh, Jordan, Banshee RL on Twitter, put together this uh, just incredible set of graphs and data showing just how bad M Plus has gotten right at the high end. You can see the vast, oh, yeah. vast, vast majority of title holders. 100% high keys and high gear have definitely fucked up how to make a raid. There's definitely an ignorance in people who only do Mythic Plus that they think, oh, because I'm four, 447 item level. I can come in here and try to kill Heroic Sarkareth, and they have, they have end up wiping the raid over and over because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, but it is, it, it's hard to stab it out. Yes, I agree. And the only way you can check is, like, raid progression. You can look at raid progression and see where people are. Um, but, but sometimes people, you know, they'll, bull, they'll bullshit a little bit. Then, you know, they'll try to get around it are God Comp members, right? Uh, looking at the chart, you see like data all the way back to BFA. It's, I mean, it's just such a great visualization. Um, and you can see that the more evenly spread the dots are, the more balanced the season was. And believe it or not, season one of Dragonflight was actually the most balanced season yet. Yeah. So that season two went so quickly wrong is going to sting even harder. Now there are always outliers, of course, but never a full comp this far ahead. And this doesn't just impact the top 0.1% either. You'll probably have noticed if you're checking the group finder, right? What happens is the meta trickles down to everyone, even though you might be playing at a key where that meta is entirely unnecessary. Look, one thing I think that could help with the frustration, the major frustration of Mythic Plus, is I understand there's a timer and, you know, you want to up your IO and all that shit. But I personally think that if somebody leaves, if somebody leaves, you should have the option if it if the timer hasn't already ended to break the timer and invite somebody else to finish out the uh to finish out the run i hate the fact that it locks up like there is no worse feeling in in wow there's nothing that frustrates me more than when i'm like 30 32 minutes deep in a uh in a mythic plus and the healer leaves and and, and that's the fucking guy who was the problem too like he was the piece of shit that we were carrying the entire time and then he ends up dropping a line like well, this group sucks. So then he fucking leaves. And now we're left with our dicks in our hand after wasting 32 minutes in a dungeon that we're not going to get anything for. Because now we can't finish it. Now we can't invite somebody else. I, I just wish you'd be able to, you know, break the key. That's fine. Timer's done. That's fine. It's not going to help out your rating at all. But at least let you finish the vault slot. I can't stand that shit. Yeah, but was he wrong? What? Just give an auto timeout and turn it into a completion without a start over. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just let let you give give you the option if the key is not already broken. Let you give you the option to end the key, but finish out the mythic plus. That way you can get a vault slot. Yeah. Just get good, bro. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but even at that, it is just so much easier You're to right, play the, the god comp. Solution, Why do anything else and risk wasting more of your time? So this season has just been a just shambles for spec balance time. as a result of the God Comp apps. Like be, being an adult with responsibilities and all kinds of shit, I usually have like a one hour window during the week to run a Mythic Plus and uh, it gets fucked all the time and I get so upset. Absolutely dominating everything and Blizzard's approach has been tiny, careful nerfs and buffs that have barely Healers moved the right needle. Now. Week after week, they tweak some numbers, but it takes months to see real change. And even then it's just drops in a bucket. And in fact, their approach opened up another problem, turning people away from playing the game. 
bring the revamp the talent trees have basically been amazing for class fantasy and player choice. The ability to pick from various forms talent of utility has been a blessing for most of us in Raiden yeah. M Plus, letting people just pick the things that they want to help out their team. And group utility is one of WoW's genuine like selling points in gameplay. But right now in M Plus, it's less of a nice bonus you bring, and it's more almost required to allow a run to happen. The perfect yeah. example is one of our God Comp members, the Priest. Between Mind Soothe enabling some amazing pack skips like in Brackenhide Hollow and pre-nerf Halls of Infusion and Master Spell being a one-click solution for a whole bunch of nightmarish mechanics, not bringing a priest great. to a dungeon felt like a massive, massive mistake. It doesn't feel like just an optimization you haven't made because the gains are so massive. And this approach to dungeon design pushes people toward re-rolling. So yeah. instead of playing the spec that they want, the one they think they'll have the most fun with, they're pressured into leveling and gearing a different character yeah. so they feel they're allowed to play the game that they want to at the level that they want to, and for people who aren't even pushing high keys, just re-rolling towards the meta, real talk, can make your life easier, and that is an extremely tempting yeah, choice. It can make your life easier, but when you're playing a game the way you don't want to play it, guess, what's, guess what ends up happening to these guys? They get burned out playing a class that they don't want like, that they don't want to play, or a spec that they don't want to play, and then they eventually convert over to classic Andes. Yeah, they just go, they just go play classic. They're like, this is too much, too competitive, I'm not having fun anymore, uh, I'm playing a class that I don't even like, I don't give a shit about, I'm just going to go play classic. Poor guys, man. Lost in the in the ELO world of a classic Andy world. When is a 15 not a 15? The answer is when Blizzard are in charge. Another yeah. thing that players have been finding quite a lot recently is the lack of consistency across dungeons. Because those yeah, numbers are supposed are to mean something. They're supposed to be a marker of difficulty since a dungeon will give you the same score and loot depending on keystone level. Except no, an Altharian's layer 16 is about as hard as an underwrought 20, despite having substantially lower score and rewards. Now this isn't horrible in itself, because in theory it's an easy enough fix, but it just doesn't get assault. They go what to great the easiest, to What's the easiest dungeon for Mythic Plus right now? Is it, I, I thought, I didn't think underwrought was easy. Is it easy? Shit, I should go do underwrought then. I actually thought Naltharian, uh, Naltharian's layer was one of the easier ones. I think I got it backwards. Modernize all dungeons by fine tuning yeah, and changing holes. boss like and mob abilities, but they fall at the last hurdle of actually balancing it all well and, uh, you know, looking after Under the season's dungeons. Yeah, and okay. that means players are confused, difficulty is not linear, and altogether it frustrates people. And a few frustrating experiences in a row will cause someone to play a different game. And the big thing is that when things don't get solved, the season just starts to get stagnant and stink. That being said, when Blizzard do stick their nose in, They've kind of been getting things wrong lately. Oh jeez, the numbers. This are tweet made didn't up. exactly okay. get the most traction, but I think it's one of the most uh, on the mark takedowns of this situation I've Healers seen. Healers hate nothing. This is the season that shows a lack of respect for players' time. There are major problems that are being clearly pointed out, but not fixed. And that means this whole clan fiesta just reinforces the perception to some people that Mythic Plus is merely a minigame, a waste of time. That if they're interested in that kind of gameplay, they should go to another game to get that feeling. Yeah. I'm sure when they find out, well, you know, take uh, the rewards they got in Shadowlands, different colors, very slightly different colors of an okay looking mount. The same thing happening this time, while the raiders are getting full transformations, and, and even the PvPers are getting their cool gladiator mounts. It's just yeah, but they a should. little percent. But they should. But they should. I kind of disagree with this point. I don't think a Mythic Pluser should get what a raider gets, and I don't think a raider should get what a gladiator gets. I'm okay with the fact that I, you know, I raid, and I, there's certain mounts that I can get, uh, but I can't get the most badass mount in the game right now, which is the gladiator mount. I'm okay with that because I'm not good enough to get it. And if I wanted to invest the time and get good, then I could get them out. But until then, I'm not going to sit here and fucking cry about the fact that I can't get Gladiator because I am not good enough to get Gladiator. Yeah, get good. It really does go back to that. I don't like the whole, uh, you know, people crying about the fact that they can't get them out because they can't complete certain content. And what makes them out cool is the fact that it's a bit rare. That it takes something to get it. That the, the you know when you see somebody on it, you're like, oh, that guy's a bat. That guy's got a big dick, because he's riding a mountain. He did that thing to get that mount. That's how it should be. That's what makes the mount great. Uh, again, people, pansies, man, bunch of snowflakes.
perception things that add up. But another thing compounds on this worse than anything I else, want the and that's mark, but I'm that okay some of Blizzard's it. changes actively undid Leave it progress. Badass. When the god comp was nerfed, Blizzard also nerfed the dungeon scaling, making every dungeon above around 16 um, just, well, get harder, a few levels slower, right? And that meant that people could progress more despite the god comp nerfs. But I, people... I will say the mythic mount for Dragonflight that they've been using the entire expansion is shitty. It is shitty. It should have been better. I do agree with that. It shouldn't be what you're getting for Gladiator, but it should be better than what it is. I, I, I'm fine saying that. People felt that this, in a way, was just moving the goalposts, you know, nerfing it like this. Um, Eyelash TV, Aerith, puts it perfectly. It feels like there were two major changes this season alone, which means doing keys three times. First at season's launch, then with Ogvoker and Godcomp, and then after Blizzard just pulled the rug on all the numbers, meaning there's a new ceiling for people to get with different difficulties, invalidating hours and hours of the hard grind. Now, to someone like me, I just don't feel that. It's not my experience. But to the people who deeply engage in Mythic Plus the same way that Raiders may yeah, engage like with Mythic Raid, actually, Trying to get that number high is a hell of a lot of their gameplay. So, whenever those numbers change in a big, flat way, they do then feel like, great, now we've got to go and test the limits of every single dungeon again to see what's happening, because the goalposts have moved. It's almost the equivalent of Blizzard just being like, ah, you know what, the dungeon's two levels higher and your character's got to level up, or, you know, whatever, right? Just changing everything, and now you've got to go and spend your time to get back to where you feel that you were. Of course, in a game, right. in a world that is predicated on actually having rules um, and, you know, making sense, that's a tough proposition. So when Blizzard makes changes like this, it kind of brazenly, you know, reveals the man behind the curtain. The magic unravels, and the players are starting to wonder why they're playing the game the in way, the first place, DK, because so yeah, much of their experience take. at that higher end ends up being that based on the whims right of, there. do Blizzard have the time to fix this problem, or will they wait too long? Uh, and if they do wait too long, well, do I just accept that and uh, put my effort into this? But then, if they go and they nerf it in like three weeks, then I'll feel like my few weeks of spending time trying to perfect these dungeons will have been lost. And that's kind of the position that these players end up in. Now, there is a line to walk here. Blizzard needs to be able to fix problems that arise. We can't just be like, oh, great, they fixed the bug, it's a bit easier now, goalpost moved. So there, there, there is a line, right? They need to be able to fix and tweak the game, but I think it's uh, doing that without devaluing players' existing effort. Nerfing the dungeon a bit or buffing an underperforming spec, that kind of thing's a bit more fine. But changing yeah. the scaling of the entire system in one fell swoop? That is a fairly dangerous thing to do. But it's not all this player experience stuff that is the issue. The actual gameplay itself is suffering, and that's another part of why the god comp is so godlike. Right. Healing kind of sucks in Mythic Plus, and that's another massive red flag, and don't Tanking take that from me, Plus take too. it from a vastly superior discipline priest, Jack. <laughs> it is, in a way, the hardest job to do by far in high keys, and it doesn't really come with complete control to make up for it. Healers are really a combination of the first and second line of defense. If the healer makes a mistake, people die. If the tank or a DPS makes a mistake, the healer usually has a chance to save them. It's and that kind of means that no matter who dies, it's sort of the healer's fault, even if they didn't do anything wrong. No, but I get blamed, man. As a blood DK, like, people expect you to run through like a guardian druid does, and you can't. You can't. Like, a blood DK, like, first of all, catching aggro is so much, it's, it is more difficult. Uh, thank God for death grip and shit like that, and you use blood boil. But otherwise, like, people get really mad at me for not, like, uh, uh, for not just going fucking god mode and pulling the, an entire area. And, and then they get mad at me, too, if I die, because they're like, you should have self-healed more. I'd be like, bitch, I'm doing 4x what the healer's doing. What are you talking about? I'm like, the healer shouldn't have to heal a blood DK. That's fine, I agree, but when we're running Nether Neltharian's Lair, and we're on the second boss, and this guy's pumping out crazy damage, at least heal me for a second during the during the big damage spikes. Uh, but, you know, it's always, it's always on the tank or the healer, I guess, you know. I, I feel bad for healers, but shit. Tanks get shit, too, if you're not a guardian druid. Uh, now, obviously, the others have important things to do, but as keys start to get insanely high, the wall that stops progress is if people can survive the incoming unavoidable damage. 
Or yeah. worse, if people let avoidable damage through, because then it's often blamed on the healer for not reacting fast enough to the situation. And as an example, when Blizzard changed up a bunch of healing numbers earlier on, they were trying to get away from this reaction time based problem. But now we have a situation where a healer tries to do a single target heal and they're like, <laughs> The bar didn't move! Where's the health? This is a fairly new phenomenon then at high keys because of dungeon design being notably different this season. Killing a boss or a big pack is less about how much damage you can pump and if you can do the mechanics and more just about if you can survive that incoming damage. That's true. And we've seen it so much in the There's spot marks that we were doing earlier on in this season. So if outgoing damage was the key or execution was the key, then this difference in spec power wouldn't directly translate to the key success as much, but it does, and that's why the god comp is so dominant. Ogvoker helps to take some weight off the healer because it gives the tank yeah, extra armor, sense. it gives everyone some bonus HP all the time, it has a strong defensive and a low cooldown with two charges that also acts as a miniature rallying cry, and also it's got a cheat death and a heal back all damage taken button. Shadow Priests rock up with Vampiric Embrace and Dispersion. Mages come in with their new Mass Barrier and Ice Block replacement. Um, Holy Paladin then is part of the comp for a reason too. Devotion Aura is king. They have some of the fastest and strongest healing tools in the game because unlike basically any other healer, they can top up whole groups in just a few quick global cooldowns yeah, without having to rely on a whole bunch of setup, hot, lengthy casts, or even some other cooldowns. They can just go and and pump without having to plan too hard for it, making them the most mistake-proof healer they, that there is. I mean, dead bubble, bop, sack, interrupt, they have so much. Now, some people enjoy that healing as an extra challenge, but when it gets into those higher keys, it clearly begins they to also be have too a lust. unbalanced, with the Holy Paladin just being the biggest outlier across the entire game. Now, Blizzard's response, of course, uh, is to nerf it without meaningfully buffing the other healers to <laughs> let them deal with, uh, of course, the extra stress the Blizzard's design has put on their shoulders. And if this keeps up and Holy Paladins just get nerfed anymore, then it may end up like, a, well, being a PvP-like situation where there's just not enough healers around, right? To let oh, other healers people play are definitely the thing that holds up a group need a, a lot of times. Now, of course, this video is talking about why Mythic Plus had so many problems in Season 2. Obviously, as we go into Season 3, they're doing fairly major changes to healing. More depth about that later, but TLDR... Some nerfs are happening, but also some pretty big single target buffs are happening too. Lack I'm still not rewards. done. There's another brutal aspect to this. Where are the rewards? Gear is one thing, but with how fast gearing is in 10.2, the lifespan for Mythic Plus for reward-oriented players took a substantial nosedive. The top 0.1% of players' title is a good carrot for very dedicated people, but cool. uh, for the rest, that's completely out of reach and unrealistic. Um, the nerfs and keys, of course, have made it fairly easy to reach your goals. Getting Keystone Master for the okay-looking mount, um, which yeah, is a ground mount, mount instead of a dragon riding thing for some reason. Should Getting have been a Keystone dragon Hero thing. for the tier set appearance upgrade, clearing all plus 20s for the teleports, and getting uh, Biss, or at least something close. This was all actually accomplished by a ton of players in a fairly tiny portion of this six-month season, right? Especially right. when they were coming out of season one, armed to the tits with a big bag of gear, including... <laughs> well, like I said, too, if you start the season out quick, like if you hit the ground running with a season and you keep up with all the other um, high IO people, you can do it really fast. The problem is if you take, like, if you go on a fucking vacation for a week or you, or you uh, don't do Mythic Plus for whatever reason for a second and you fall behind in terms of IO, good luck being with those boys. Good luck getting into those groups anymore. And then you start to fall behind. And then you start to get invites to lower IO groups. And then those groups start not finishing their shit and you start falling even further behind. It's, it's really bad. Like, once, if you're not in that initial group that takes off like a fucking rocket, you get left behind big time. And then it's a real fucking grind to get up there. Perhaps a four tier or a four, you know, four piece tier set. So why bother pushing beyond? I mean, you, you can put more plus in your mythic plus, but like why? Without rewards for doing more, it leaves only one answer because you want to. And as we've described in today's video at length, that's not exactly a very fun process this season. And that means that less people want to do it and that means 
the last people are playing. Yeah, there's definite burnout. Yeah, Day, I know you guys would carry me if I if I asked for it, but I, I do like to try to just do it on my own. You know, and, and I don't know when I'm going to play half the time. I'll just get online and just queue up for a key. Um, yeah, I don't I don't want to get carried. I do want to be able to do it. It's just kind of sad that, you know, the groups that I get, a, a lot of times there's something janked about it. It doesn't get finished. The Mythic Plus burnout then is fairly real. A lot of you watching may think it's just fine, you know? Just start playing. And actually, that's right. If you're not having fun and you don't want to play, stop. That is the yeah, healthy response. Maybe I should. And to so many of you, perhaps like me, you'll never engage with Mythic Plus in this way, right? You're never going to be trying to do a plus 25 or, yeah, I don't you know, care get to do that a plus uh, top uh, title. Like, I'm not going to try to do that. I just want to do like an 18 uh, or higher. This, get that highest vault slot filled, and that's it does impact the substantial amount of people who are playing at the very top end of things, and any of their perceptions will trickle Game down to the community at large, too. as I'm There's sure people. many people who've had the misfortune of pugging Mythic Plus uh, do indeed see in a fairly regular basis. Really, just like the worst of with Shadowlands, the issue here is that people actually do want to play the game, but it just ends up being too frustrating of an experience for them yeah, to Yeah, it's an angering to do experience, it. for sure. There's nothing worse than people having an itch for the game, right? They want to play. Um, it's an itch that only your game provides, and you just can't scratch it because there's a massive wall of problems in the way. It's not exactly the same, but it does ring similar to the people who wanted to raid and do Mythic Plus in Shadowlands, but were having to run Torghast, do Corthia, or feel stuck with the whole Covenant thing, right? That yeah. made doing what you want to do an absolute nightmare. Yeah, and yeah. when it actually comes to burnout for so like professionals, you know, burnout in your job, burnout in your creative field, do you know what like a lot of the research points towards? a perceived lack of control and agency over your situation, that's like the thing that can cause burnout. Makes sense. And I think when you think about Shadowlands and when you think about season two, you can actually see that ring true for burnout for Mythic Plus as well. Now, not yeah. to be a total downer here. Oh, I definitely feel it. Things... Like even if I'm fully geared, full God mode, going nuts and basically carrying an entire group, I still can't do it by myself. You still don't have complete control, and then you get the guy who leaves. The guy who fucking leaves. And I swear to God, 90% of the time, the guy who leaves is the one who was the problem. It's the one who was the problem. I don't know if they don't see it, or they're embarrassed by it, and that's why they leave, or what, or they want to do it before someone else does it. But, but they will leave, fuck the group over, and everyone's standing there looking around like, did that guy, is he seriously the one who just fucking bailed? That piece of shit that we've been carrying this, and he's the one who fucking bailed. All right, boys, peace. It's such a sad feeling, such a frustrating feeling when a key ends that way. Things about Mythic Plus this season worked really well. The uh, deep I just lever. think that they worked really well, not for the people who are complaining, and not for the people who maybe after the first month or two started to struggle with the system. The affix reshuffle, like for a player like me, that worked out pretty well because I just don't enjoy those affixes. So they're yeah, being I do less like of them. The, 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 the dungeon is not was applying until later keys thing. The gear system, big win. You know, the higher threshold before the affixes start. Another big win. For a lot of people, those dungeons were more approachable. That's why initially I was surprised that there were issues with this season of Mythic Plus, because I thought to myself, but they're so much more approachable. And it turns out, yeah, all the problems happen after all those affixes have, you know, have, have turned on and after all that scaling yeah. has happened to those One dungeons. One thing about Legion Mythic Plus, remember, there were no affixes. All the, the only thing Legion Mythic Plus was was just a scaling of the difficulty of the, uh, like, the, the mobs hit harder and they had more health. Next key up, the mobs hit harder and they have more health. Another level up, the mobs hit even harder and they have even more health. That was all it was. And if you guys remember, Legion was before the um, AoE cap. So if you were geared and you were like really cranking through keys, you would feel more powerful because as a tank, you could just pull massive fucking mobs and cleave the shit out of them. It was such a godlike feeling. It felt so good. And of course, anything that looks that fun, well, here come the fun the Blizzard fun police. Nope, gotta cap that shit. Can't have that happening. Uh, so not only did they like limit AOE, they added affixes, and they just made the whole system more, more difficult and bogged down and uh, more frustrating. The dungeon redesigns, those have actually been um, really great. So there's many great elements here, and those improved no more the game for, God a, for, for a ton of people, me included, and my friends too. But there's evidently something going on. We've, we've probably all seen it being talked about. If you've been pugging, you've probably seen the results of it too. 
I think the issue here is that Blizzard didn't perform the necessary aftercare and their experimentation was a bit out of control. Because right. without the Ogvoker, Paladin, or Mage reworks, this season probably would not have ran into some of the problems that it did. And the challenge there is, many people enjoy Ogvoker, many people really enjoy the Mage and Holy Paladin rework. Agreed. Quite a challenging problem. I wonder if people are going to like the Rogue then, we work. I think they've done so much insanely good work recently. And when I look at 10.2, there are many great systemic changes to the game there as well. And that means that it yeah, is a shame to see them fall at that last hurdle and let an easy win slip through their fingers like this. The solution. Usually in all these videos, I'd end in a segment outlining what Blizzard can do, but we don't really need to because it's self-evident, and the entire Mythic Plus community has pretty much been telling them loudly all over the internet. Remove Ogvoker! Okay, no, I'm, that's me joking. Please don't. But seriously, oh, some man, of the just, issues are I just obvious. realized Panda like, TV not... is going to see this video and say Bellular shitting on Blizzard again. It's another negative video. Oh, damn it. Off the God comp, the but drama buff continues. the other specs instead. Tweak the dungeons so that they are closer together. Nerf how useful utility is, so having a priest is a minor bonus instead of something yeah. you feel you need to have. Or at least make sure that everybody gets to contribute a little bit more. Yeah. I think here the name of the game is agility, because you are live tweaking the meta of a game within your game. Letting, though, a pillar Look of the, the game suffer health. a death of a thousand cuts. Immortal. That's not Fucking good. immortal. So they're great at adding features, new ones, quickly. And they're great at working on patches in parallel, but not everything seems to be quite right just yet. The team responsible for balancing needs their limiter removed. Maybe they need more resources. I don't know. Yeah, they're going to get it. This part of the game... Daddy Bill Gates and Microsoft are coming to save the day. So, look, I hope this was an informative review into what's going on with Mythic Plus. To be transparent with you, um, I was seeing so many tweets from top-end Mythic players and I essentially wanted to work out what was going on. And, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of people um, on our team here. One of them, Dakor, is a uh, cutting-edge uh, Mythic Raider. He does plenty of uh, high, like, Mythic Plus keys, and he's really got his finger on the pulse in that whole scene. So I'm basically just like, I don't exactly know what's going on. Person who is embedded in this scene and knows what's going on, Please find all the problems and present them to me and Matt. And uh, that's really where this video came about. It was trying to identify the problem, work yeah. out what it is, and uh, then explain it to everybody, including myself, so that we can all learn and understand what is going on. So there you go. I hope you found this uh, to be useful. Good video. And I suppose with the amount of very clear feedback, it would be fairly hard for them to, uh, you know repeat this mistake again. I mean, they have established Mythic Plus as a pillar of the game over four expansions. We've had Mythic Plus for seven out of WoW's 19 years, so... Damn, really? It's been yeah, that long? When it's so close to being in the Holy best crap. shape it's ever been in, it is sad to see the post-season two launch period go the way that it went. Yes, I agree. Good video, man. It's, honestly, I when I saw the title of the video, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to watch this because Mythic Plus has been a frustration for me. And I want to know if it's like just me. Do I need to get better or is there like an underlying issue here? And evidently playing as a Blood Decay set me back. What am I going to do? But hey, we'll see if they fix it.